Hey everybody, welcome back to Better Computer. My name is Matt, and today I'm super excited to get to show you 10 apps on my Mac that I think are really cool, that I really value, and I think that you either don't have on your Mac already or haven't even heard of. I guarantee there'll be at least one of these <laughs> that you don't know of already. So, uh, before we get into it, I did want to say this is the Season 2 finale of A Better Computer. I'm going to take a few months off during the summer to just not make videos on any sort of a regular basis. I just need the time to relax. I don't have a lot of time in the summer anyway to do this sort of thing, so... Yeah, gonna take a few months off and then I'll be back in the fall doing more. Um, I do have some stuff cooking up this summer that I think will be fun, so stay subscribed to make sure you see that when it comes out. But yeah, let's jump into today's video. Okay, so here we are on the Mac and the first app I wanna look at is called Accents. So in the appearance settings of your Mac, go to system settings, go to appearance, you're gonna see an accent color option. You can choose from a bunch of these, right? Um, and the default, I think, is multicolor, so each app can have its own um, colors. So Sketch, for example, has orange, um, or you can override it. So if you want everything to be pink, now it's pink. And if we go back to Sketch, Sketch is going to respect your choice, and hey, all of these options are now pink. But there are exclusive options way over here on the right for people who have iMacs. So iMacs have an additional color that will match whatever body color their computer is. You can get that on any Mac using um, Accents. It's a free app, totally easy to use, and basically you can set your color here. So these are all the ones that are built into the system, but we also have the iMac Accent colors. So I personally, you might like this dark green, you might like the darker yellow. I personally like this kind of dark blue uh, that they have. And so that's it, I'm done. Get out of Accents. Uh, let's go to Appearance again, and now you're going to see this additional option here called This Mac. Super awesome, love to see it, and we'll set my highlight color to that as well. Um, and so now, again, if I go into Sketch, it's going to respect that new color. There you go. So now you can see that color is being used. Love this little utility, again, totally free, and I should say links to everything in the description. Next up, we have an app called Audio Hijack. This one is not free, and actually there's a ton in this app but I find it the best easy way and most customizable way to record audio from my computer. So uh, for example, I have a session called Record Sure, which is record this very microphone. Um, and it's a very simple workflow. I take an input device, which is the Shure MV7 microphone that I'm talking into right now. And I record it to an MP3 file that's saved to my downloads. There are other things you can do here though. So if you go to blocks, there's other things you could do. Um, so we could, for example, live stream somewhere else. Um, we can balance things. We can um, do some things to make sure that I don't uh, peak. I would make sure the uh, audio is always within a certain range. I can remove hum from the raw recording, which is great. Uh, they even have this like transcribe feature and you just kind of drag it in here. And what this will do, for example, is it will create a high quality transcript of the thing in real time as you record. So once you're done, in this case, I'm going to record into this microphone, I'm going to transcribe it, and I'm going to save an audio file. And so at the end, I'm gonna have an MP3 with the audio. I'm also gonna have a high quality transcript that I can do something with. So super rad, tons more to get into, but if you want something that's gonna record audio on your Mac, this is the best in class in my opinion. Next up, we have Bartender. Bartender is one that I think I've talked about on this channel before, but Bartender brings some sanity to your menu bar. You can see I only have a few things showing up in my menu bar here, but if I hover over this section, a few more items come out. So I'm tracking some other information here, but I don't wanna see these all the time. I don't need to see them, so I don't have them showing. It saves space, especially when I'm using the laptop uh, screen. It just saves a lot of space that I don't necessarily have. So I really like Bartender. There's also one called uh, Hidden Bar. Yeah, Hidden Bar as well, which I think is totally free. I'll leave links to both in the description. Uh, you can decide which one is better for you. Bartender has more features. I personally like it, uh, but Hidden Bar gets you a lot of this value totally for free. Next up is Better Display. Better Display is such an awesome utility if you use an external monitor that's not made by Apple. So one of the big limitations of using a monitor like this, I have a Sony one, is that you can't change the brightness, you can't change the volume with uh, Mackle, Mackles, Apple's <laughs> built-in keyboard shortcuts. Uh, with a Better Display installed, they have controls for changing the brightness. You can maybe see that on my face as I lower and then raise the brightness. Um, I can do that here. Uh, I can also change the volume output, which is so great because I have my speakers plugged into my display. Um, being able to change it with keyboard shortcuts is awesome. I wasn't able to do that before. I wasn't able to do either of these before. Um, I would have to use like the on-screen controls, which sucked. There's a lot of other stuff here. I should probably make a dedicated video about this, but yeah. 
really, really awesome free app. Now, I've kind of shown this other app already. I showed it up here uh, when I'm watching my CPU cycles here. I can see my network traffic here. Um, these are things that I just like to be able to see at a glance sometimes. Again, they're hidden with Bartender, so I don't see them all the time. But when I want to see them, I like to see them quickly. iStat Menus lets me do this. Uh, there is a free alternative as well. I'll try to find that link and put it in the description too for you. But yeah, you can basically customize a lot of these. So that CPU and GPU one, I've got the bar chart and the CPU label, which you can see right here. If I click on it, it's actually gonna show me quite a bit of detail <laughs> to see what's doing everything. Um, so quite a bit of info here. If you're troubleshooting, I find it really helpful to have. Uh, if you change this, uh, let's say, uh, let's throw this 50% up there for total usage. Oops, um, it changes in real time. Um, yeah, so I think bartenders a little slow to update there, but yeah, so now you can see the percentage as well. Easy as that. And you can do that for network traffic. You can do that. You can put the weather up there, memory usage, all sorts of things. So iStat menus is the best in class in my opinion, but again, a free option will be in the description as well for you. This next app is called Fission, and this is made by the same people who make Audio Hijack. It's a really high quality app, and basically I use it just for converting audio files. So I have an M4A file over here. I'd really like it to be an MP3. It's surprisingly annoying to turn things into MP3 files, but with Fission, it's super easy. I drag it in, here's the file, cool, no big deal. Command E to export. I can choose from all these file types. I'm just gonna do MP3, export, where do I want it? Save it to my desktop, please, save it. It's going to export. This is an eight and a half minute file. It's exporting on an M2 Pro processor. There you go. And now I have an MP3 version of that. This app has some more features. Again, could do a dedicated video to it, but that's the thing I use it for all the time and is worth like the 20 bucks or whatever I spent for it because it's just fast, works reliably. I don't have to worry about going to some website that's skeezy and slow and everything. I like it for my needs. This next one is for my Apple Notes fans out there. So by default, Apple Notes has some formatting, but it's kind of annoying to get to. Um, this is the note title. Uh, this is a subheading. And how do I make this into a subheading, right? I select it and I click and there we go. Now it's a heading. Um, I can also do it, let's just do some gibberish. I can also do it from the menu bar. Um, I could turn this into like a subheading, let's say, and there's keyboard shortcuts for all these, but like command shift J for subheading, command shift H for head, like you're not gonna remember all these. So Pronotes makes this easier. So we're gonna open Pronotes and instantly I'm gonna have some new functionality. Let's say I wanna add a table. Well, I just slice, sla uh, type slash uh, and then all my options are there. Let's do table. Now I have a table, cool. Um, this is another heading. How do I turn this into something? Slash heading. There you go. And it does show you all of the keyboard shortcuts for these as well. So if you can remember them, you can do them quicker with the keyboard. But I like having this just slash option to bring in some stuff. Down here at the bottom, they have some AI features. Um, I think if I had summarize, it's going to tell me to subscribe to Pronotes Gold, which I don't subscribe to. Um, are those useful? I don't know. But it the ability to just kind of hit slash and then add a thing and change the styling, I really like that. So pretty cool little free utility. Our next app is called Rectangle and it adds some window management tools to macOS that really should be built in by default. So I've got my note window here and if I want this to be uh, full screen, um, how do I do that on macOS? Double click this, that works, so that's nice. But what if I wanted it to take up the left half of the screen? Well, that's trickier. Uh, with Rectangle, I can just drag it over here and now it's using the left side. Oh, is that now what I want? Drag it away, it resizes to the size it was before. Let's move it over to the right, cool. There we go. What if I wanted to just take up the middle column? There we go, uh, taking up the middle. And if I wanna drag and have a uh, kind of way to make it full screen as well, drag it to the top of the screen. There you go, full screen. And now it's back to normal. Uh, this is all managed from here. All of these are possible. I think if I drag it to the bottom left, there we go. It's taking up the quarter of the screen. So whatever arrangement you wanna do, you can achieve it. There's keyboard shortcuts for all this tons and tons of keyboard shortcuts here. Um, and yeah, just if you want some more easy window management to uh, sort things out, this is a really nice little tool. This next one is called Sim Daltonism, which is a really cool app if you work with accessibility features. Uh, basically what this does is create a window that you can put over your display to simulate different types of vision. So if I hit this guy, I can choose um, what sort of colorblindness basically I want to simulate so I can see how things would look to someone with different vision from me. 
As a UI designer, I find this super helpful when testing what I'm working on to make sure that color is not the only thing that's uh, showing things. And if I am using colors to try to differentiate things at a glance, I try to make sure that they're able to be differentiated by people with a different vision for me. This is a super useful free little tool. And finally, the last thing is actually pretty hard to show because I've recorded the whole video with it uh, and it's called Screen Studio. Um, it's a really cool app for recording your screen and creating these cool little um, effects laden zoom uh, enhanced uh, videos. If basically, if you like the production of this video, it was done with Screen Studio. I've used ScreenFlow for many years. I think that's an awesome tool. But Screen Studio is giving me some new tools, some things to play with that make my videos feel a little more fresh in my opinion. It does some automatic stuff with like zooming like crazy that I find a little annoying honestly, but um, yeah, you can do everything manually as well and I'm getting some good results from it and I'm pretty happy. So that is 10 little apps I don't really talk about on this channel that I hope you guys enjoyed. A lot of them are free, a lot of them are paid up front and yeah, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for watching A Better Computer Season 2. And I'll see you here soon.